two videos I did this morning. One was 10 minutes, one was 13, and uh, <clears throat> be the first to admit, rambled a little bit. A little bit of a ramble fest. So, um, uh, I made a mistake in one of the videos too. I had said that White Tiger and Unbeatable Camp were racing Friday. They were supposed to qualify Friday. That's been moved to Monday. Now, the whole point of my video today was to talk about um, a little bit yesterday. Obviously, uh, I, somebody messaged me and said, you forgot about Stummer Ducati. What had happened was I was going to eat. I did my video. And as I was doing my video, it dawned on me that I couldn't talk about Stomer Ducati because he hasn't raced yet. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to finish my video. If he races great, I'll just do a new video. If he races bad, I just won't talk about him until today. It never dawned on me that there'd be a thunderstorm and the races would be canceled. And complicating the whole thing is the first division of that la the first leg of that uh, of that series went. So I had asked Stacy, "Geez, what happens now?" She goes, "Well, I believe what they're going to do is race the first leg in an overnight next week. Have the leg that didn't get to race." In, in the, what well, they're going to call it, the first lag, and then race them back, uh, continue on the week after. Seems odd, but okay. I guess they have to do something. So, um, so uh, you know, yesterday was a bit of a bittersweet day. It was so it was so nice to get that victory with HP Meister. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, Sister Solange qualified good, but skinny. She lost a little bit of weight again. I just can't, we can't keep weight on her. So that is part and parcel to the reason we're sending the horse to Megan Scranton. She's on a farm where there's lots of paddocks. Uh, she did put a little bit of weight on uh, on Sister Solange last year. And I just think uh, being able to focus on her every day and know, especially knowing the filly also, knowing her weaknesses or strengths will play well for us. So Sister Solange is going to Megan. Now, I know I had a number of people ask, well, you know, I'm not licensed in New York. Is she going to race her in Yonkers? Or, I, I believe we should race the Philly wherever she can win. That's my belief. And if that's Yonkers or the Poconos or Saratoga, then so be it. I, I guess we really have to get a handle on. She's not going to spend a lot of time in New York, so I have to get a handle on as far as she's not going to race very much in New York. But that avenue would be nice to have, wouldn't it? So I'll reach out to everybody today again and ask them, you know, uh, there are some people that are likely just going to sell their shares rather than, than hang on to her, which is, you know, that's a frustrating part of, of what we do is is uh, when people can't hang on to their shares because of licensing woes. It's just, it's so bad for the industry. It's a bad look, and I really wish that people would take it a little more seriously, especially in New York, because, you know, as I was saying to somebody the other day, I was sent a thing saying, hey, you know, you can present things that... Uh, from the New York State Racing Commission, I think it was March, I'm not sure the date, it's coming up. I had spoke to Blue Chip Farms and they said, yes, we're going to present, if you want to come, we'd appreciate it, and I will, if I can. I would like the state of New York, definitely the New York State Racing Commission, to understand that they have lost out on thousands and thousands, and eventually what will become millions of dollars, just from us. You know, we have 61 babies, we have 145 horses, the horses we race in New York, and we buy for New York is drastically lower than what it could be if it was easier to get licensed in that state. You know it. I know it. And Blue Chip knows it. And I suspect the New York State Racing Commission knows it too. That'll be up to them to do something about that. If they want to, it's up to them. Anyway, um, so Sister Solange, uh, I believe, should race where she can win her first start. And there has to be a class for a filly with 14,000 made in one win who just qualified in 58 on a half-mile track. Yeah, there should be a few places to race her. So uh, first and foremost, get the weight on her. So she likely won't race for two weeks. Um, it'll take that for Megan to get her to get her a little bit of weight on her and get her feeling good. We did run some fluids and, and give her some gastric guard yesterday after the qualifier um, just to get a head start, so to speak. Uh, so Sister Solange was good, um, um, and then earlier in the day, you know, the, the babies trained so good in the morning, I was having a great day, my fingers, my toes were crossed, I was just hoping that Patrick wasn't going to be what he had become over the last month and a half, just down in the dumps and in a funk, and, you know, hopes and prayers just don't get it done in this game, not very often, and, uh, 
Patrick was bad. Made a break behind the gate, and we ended up selling him and Macho Martini. Went down to Macho Martini, and the class filled, so they tagged on it. Uh, PA owned and bred first and foremost. We didn't get in. I was a little mad. Anyway, uh, Martini's been bad, too, so I sold them both. Yesterday, our blacksmith, who's an Amish guy, um, Enos, loves the horses, and uh, ended up buying both of them, uh, which at what I would consider a pretty fair price. Um, so then Solange qualified and then, uh, much, and then, uh, HB Maestro was just great. You know, I love the meat and potatoes horses. You know, he's not going to trot in 53. I told everybody, uh, I was talking to a couple of people. I said, I would rather have HB Maestro than Sailor when we sold Sailor. Sailor's faster than he'll ever be, but doesn't show up consistently. Right. And that was the thing. HB Maestro every week. I don't know that he puts in a full effort, but I know he puts in the same effort every week. And that's really all you need is consistency. And he was he was good last night. A winner raced really really well. Very very happy with him. Um, I'm going to. I went to train Crantini Table. It was muddy. Track was muddy. I don't know if we're going to be able to train tomorrow. So uh, hopefully we can. Ready for landing? Landed. We jogged him today. He looked great. It'll be his first training trip in uh, Canada. Will be tomorrow if we get to train. Those sets will be up later. And I know a lot of people are going to say, "Can you video it?" Curtis is not back until Saturday. Next week we will video, but. Uh, we can't this week, so just training tomorrow, uh, training Saturday. I might ask Curtis if he's wrapped everything up. I think he said he's not back till the first of the week, though, uh, in regards to Ohio on uh, Saturday morning. Um, lots going on right now. We get the staking done. A number of people reached out to me. Uh, I'm glad they did, and I appreciate it very much. Full Heart wasn't on the staking list. Sweeney wasn't on the staking list, and the reason being they were simply forgot off the list. That doesn't mean that they weren't staked. It just means they were forgot. Now, um, I had spoke to uh, Jim at Joanne's yesterday, and everything was rectified on those two horses. So, um, it's this type of situation, when it's the old, if you see something, say something type deal. We have 150 horses, and to think that uh, human error would never come in and play a role in, in anything we do, is it would be wrong, right? Everybody makes mistakes, and this is just one aspect of racing where you don't want to make any mistakes. And... Um, so I do appreciate the multitude of people, the many people that had reached out and said, hey, Full Heart's not on there. Hey, Sweeney's not on there. Thank you very much for that. Um, also, we get horses racing today. Walk of the Moon's racing uh, this afternoon. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not, not unfortunately. I'm going to watch Oliver speak right now as soon as I'm done here. going to go watch Oliver speak, and then I'm going to go to uh, watch Walk of the Moon this afternoon. Blue Tesla this afternoon. Then we have Dustin Hanover and Atlas Hanover today. So it should be a decent day. We get Hunted House coming up. All the powers on the way. Locatelli starts on Monday. White Tiger qualifies on Monday. Unbeatable Kemp qualifies on Monday. Uh, Horn Player schools on Monday. Gandalf the Black schools on Monday. Um, so does JK Victory. Uh, Yo Mister will be racing next week. Everything is coming. Uh, which is good. I'm going to revisit everything that took place over the winter. I, I know I mentioned how the Metal Land sale played a negative impact. Not having it played a negative impact, but was it? We still got some horses. I think next winter, again, we are going to have to focus on numbers one, two, and three. Build our horses up and have some quality horses also. So I'm going to take a look at exactly what I felt went wrong this winter and make some mental notes so it doesn't happen again next year. But Spring is almost sprung. I know there's a lot of snow here. It was plus 20 yesterday at Northfield Park. Um, the nice weather is coming. The babies are training great. The three-year-olds are getting close. Super exciting time of the year. I know I say super exciting. I said that yesterday in the video. Uh, it is a very exciting time of the year. And um, the only downside of this time of the year is the staking payments getting done. A little stress in that regard. We're looking to maybe mitigate that also. Maybe build some of the staking into our purchase prices next year for the horses. I know that's a little complicated. Anything we can do to take the spring, uh, you know, funk, the spring payments out of the spring would make it a much better spring, definitely for me and likely for everybody else. So um, if you have any thoughts, drop me a line. I know a couple of people have already. I like the idea. I floated the idea to the Hamiltonian Society of like they do in Australia, staking on sale day. Imagine now if we bought a horse for 22 that we thought was worth 35 or 40, what would be the difference if we paid all our staking, whether it be 5,000 up front, I'd be happy to do that. And I think most people would, but that's not an option at this point. I think in some point down the line, it will have to be, but for now it is not. So if you have any plans, any ideas, I appreciate the two or three emails coming over the last few days talking about this. Um, 
I would like to figure out a way to build the payments in um, beforehand so we aren't left working working like this. But it is what it is, part of the job um, and part of the industry. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys had a, a good day. It was a little muddy today, but the weather's pretty good otherwise. And I'm off, excited to watch Ollie speak at his school. I will talk to you all very soon. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.